My name's Jose Lopez. I was a former Boston public school teacher for seven years. I taught civics in our classrooms. I used to do a yearly trip with my students to visit HBCUs, historically black colleges, universities. And one of the schools I would stop at is Howard University. One year when I was at Howard University, I read a speech that was given in 1966 to Har uh, Howard's graduating class by Adam Clayton Powell. And he said something there that still resonates with me today. And it resonates with me when I think about this race and I think about what I'm trying to do in District 7. He tells the story uh, of a question. And this question comes from the Bible. And it was a question that Nathaniel asks Philip about this town called Nazareth. And he asks, what good thing can come out of Nazareth? And he asked that question because Nazareth had this reputation to outsiders of not being a great place, of being a place where you couldn't find a lot of positivity, of being a place that people didn't want to live in. And it makes me think about this district because I see Roxbury as being the Nazareth of Galilee. I see Roxbury as having this reputation from the outside as a place where people don't expect anything positive to come out of. But what I've learned since I moved to Roxbury in 2005 is that that is absolutely not true. And when people ask me, Jose, what's the most important issue or thing in this race for this district, for Roxbury? What I tell them is that there's a lack of vision. There's a lack of leadership in figuring out how are we gonna take all of the positive things that we have in Roxburgh. All of the assets, all of the passion, all of the interests, the expertise that exists right here and has existed here for decades. And how do we weave that into the future of Boston? The people who I talk to as I'm door knocking, campaigning, and even during the years that I've lived here, I've met incredible people who live in this district who have never been asked that question, what good can come out of Roxburgh? Because if that question was asked by the city, by the city council, what they would find is just like Phillip's answer, come and see, the people in this district would answer the same way. What good thing can come out of Roxbury? Well, come and see, and I'll show you. I'll show you the wonderful parents. Come and see the families that live here and who want to stay here. Come and see the education of our children. And the dreams and aspirations that the children have in our classrooms, come and see the passion that the people living in Roxbury have, not just for the place today, but for what Roxbury was in its past, what it is today, the people in the past, and the people today. What I intend to do as a city councilor is make sure that I provide an actual platform for the people living here so that they can answer the same way that Philip answered and they can say, well, come and see what's great about here. I want to fundamentally transform the city council. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. What I mean is I want to put the expertise that we have here, the expertise that walks around every day, the people who know this place, who have ideas, who have solutions, who have an expertise. I want to put them on the city council and create a space for them. Now, what I mean by that is on the 21 committees that we have, the 21 committees that the city councilors have on everything from arts to education to public housing, the only people that sit on those committees are the city councilors. We do not provide a space or invite the community to come in and provide their expertise and what they know and the solutions they have to those committees. What I plan on doing is legislating and creating actual seats on those committees for residents. So by way of example, on the Education Committee, I think there should be three seats reserved for parents whose children attend Boston Public Schools. I think in addition, there can be a seat for educators who teach in Boston Public Schools. I think these people should be meeting regularly, not just when something happens and there's a problem. I think we should institutionalize uh, the community coming into the City Council and providing their input and expertise. That's sort of the large framework that I have for the city council. In terms of issues that I care about, number one is fixing that lack of vision. And I think we start doing that by bringing in you guys, 
the people who attend meetings, who know what's going on, who have solutions, who want to be a part of the solution, bringing you into city councils, housing, education, and our elderly are the issues that I care most about. I'll start with education. I taught for seven years. The biggest issue I see that we have here in Boston is that we haven't yet figured out how to match the colleges, universities, and what they do with the needs of our children. I'll give you an example. The charter school is in our district. That school just had a decrease of 3% in funding. That school's science scores, only 47%, excuse me, of the over 500 children that go there are proficient in science. Now, this same school has a partnership with Boston University. How can we have a school like the Trotter and less than half of the kids doing well in science where there is a partnership with one of the best science research institutions in the United States of America, Boston University? That doesn't match up. There needs to be a reevaluation of that partnership. And there needs to be a demand that says, if you're going to partnership with our school, then help us with this. Help us raise these science scores. That's what you guys do. You're a science-based institution. I think if we reevaluate all of those partnerships, we can bring a lot of benefit to our children if we're more deliberate in terms of what we're asking for. And it can happen here. In terms of housing, we do know that one thing candidates can't do is neglect the fact that we are getting people moved out of our city. So something I want to do is make sure that our inclusionary development policy, the IDP that exists, that treats this neighborhood different than other neighborhoods. The commitment here is only 13% to affordable housing. In downtown, it's 18%, okay? Now that's a policy that's in place that we can change. We just need the leadership to do that. I would change that designation from 13% to something more in line with what the community is looking for. In terms of elderly services, a lot of the elders that I know are also not included in the future of Boston, in the planning. We don't reach out to them to be sources of ideas and experience, and it's to our detriment that we do that. They have a lot to offer. In terms of education, we have a lot of retired teachers that we never put back to use in Boston Public Schools. We never bring them into the classrooms to serve as mentors to our incoming teachers. That is one great way to put our elders who are here of service just in that profession. It can be done in other professions. Um, some of our elders are veterans as well. Mr. Fitz, who lives on my street, is a veteran, the 82nd Airborne, um, and I speak to his children regularly. And when I speak to them about benefits that they've received, um, being the children of veterans, they say that they want more, and I think we can do that. No other place, ladies and gentlemen, is poised like this city to deal with the needs of an urban population. There's no other city in the world like Boston that has what it has. The question is, are we finally going to figure out how to put it to use to the people who currently live here? And to do that, I'm going to need your support and I'm going to need your help. And so what I'm asking for you guys today is to look at my website. Look at my platform. Look at who I am. Look at what I've done, how I've contributed to the city, and take this into consideration. I promise to all of you that the same rigor and integrity that I brought to my students as a classroom teacher, as a history teacher, the same integrity and passion that I use when I represent my clients today as an attorney, it's the same integrity and passion that you can count on me as a city councilor. I will make it my duty to make sure that I am providing constituent services to the people who live in my district, that I am out there, I'm finding out what you care about, that there is open communication, and that I'm creating with you solutions to the issues and questions that you have. So again, my name is Jose Lopez. The last thing I'll leave with you is that I have a vision for this district that's rooted not in our deficiencies, because we already know the bad, but it's rooted in our assets, the things that I know we have to offer. And I think that's what separates my campaign from others. So I please ask you to consider uh, voting for me after you looked at my platform. And if I have something wrong, give me a call and let me know. Because I want to make sure that if I'm going to represent the folk in this district, that I get it right. There was a time where you could not find a skyscraper uh, downtown near Copley, right? There was a time you couldn't find that. So the city decided they were going to allow there to be a skyscraper down there. So they opened it up to RFPs. People put bids in for skyscrapers. The concern for the city then was, what's going to happen to the Copley Church? What's going to happen to the Copley Library? Right? We have these beautiful uh, structures there. And if we put a skyscraper in the middle of that, it's going to impose on everything. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't look right. The solution was building a building that reflected the architecture around it. And that's how we got the building that we have down there. Right? 
when I think about development in this community, I'm always asking myself, how does that development fit into the character of the community that it's being built in? And if it doesn't fit, then we need to ask ourselves, do we need it? Does it need to be built? What needs is that development addressing for this community? Right now, what we need in this community, we need more affordable housing. That, I mean, that's clear to everyone who lives here now and people who are, quite frankly, trying to live here. My wife and I were looking for an apartment a couple months ago. Nothing in Roxbury was affordable to the couple that's an attorney and a social worker. We could not afford an apartment in Roxbury. We tried Craigslist, we tried Zillow, fine. So how do we deal with that issue? Where do we get these resources to do it? What can we do? We just passed the Community Preservation Act. The Community Preservation Act is bringing $10 million into the city every year. That's an estimate, okay? Right now, people who live here can't submit grants along the lines of trying to preserve community. And if we're not trying to keep people living here, and that counts as preserving community, then I don't know what should, okay? But that's one opportunity that we already have to make sure that we're not just strengthening the options here, but we're providing more opportunity here, okay? Aside from that, we need to ask for these mutual benefit agreements, right? These are agreements between communities and developers that really lay the rules on, okay, listen, you're going to develop here. This is what you're going to have to commit to because this is what the community needs. And if you don't want it, then don't develop here, okay? We're not strong enough as a community yet to put those forward, okay? And we need to be. And I think by including citizens who care about these issues, because I meet them all the time, I mean, Chuck Turner was here earlier. That's someone who's been fighting for affordable housing for a long time. Someone like him, someone who cares that deeply about housing, who has the expertise, should be meeting with the city councils, excuse me, the city councilor regularly when it comes to planning, especially when we're dealing with hyperdevelopment. There is so much new interest, right? New dollars in a community that before didn't have any interest. There was no interest in developing here at one time. And that was fine, because the community here then said, okay, well, we're going to build our community. And they did. And it's wonderful, and it's great. And now we're at risk of losing it. So unless we provide those opportunities, and I think that my vision of opening up the city council to citizens, to residents here, is a great way to make that happen. Thank you all for hanging out this late. I really do appreciate it. You guys make the difference. I'm running in this race for you. I'm running in this race for this district, for this community to do whatever it is you need me to do. Constituent services is what I'm all about. It's what I'll get done. You can hold me accountable to it. And if you can't reach me, just look at my wife. You'll be able to find her and she'll be able to reach me. But I'm here for you all, whatever you need, even now. If you're dealing with an issue now and you need some support, let me know and I'd be glad to now make phone calls, stand with you, organize with you. Um, and I'm having a barbecue August 31st. It's not campaign related. It's just getting people in the community together. All of you guys are invited. 15 Wakulla Street, right down the street. Thank you so much.